Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today we'll have a look at a recent paper for which Dr. James Kirkland is one of the authors. The study looks at how the presence of senescent cells and SASP reduce the expression of alpha clotho and removing these senescent cells can increase its expression. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a study that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Before we dive into the details of the paper, why do we care about our levels of clotho? To address this, let's have a quick look at a couple of papers about the protein. This is the first, clotho, aging and the failing kidney. Clotho has been recognized as a gene involved in aging in mammals for over 30 years. In the kidney, phosphate toxicity is a hallmark of aging and related with the reduction in clotho. As such, ways of increasing clotho activity have been sought, in particular for chronic kidney disease. Various therapies have been tried to directly or indirectly influence clotho expression. This paper looks at another way of accomplishing this goal. Apart from the kidney, clotho is also present in the brain. The second paper looks at its expression there. It identifies clotho as a longevity protein and as a possible indicator of cognitive function. As they state here, it has demonstrated cognitive enhancing effects on the brain. With that little piece of background of clotho, let's have a look at the paper in more detail. Here is the paper, Orally Active Clinically Translatable Senolytics Restore Alpha Clotho in Mice and Humans. Some of the keywords here are orally active, so not requiring any special administration, and clinically translatable, meaning that they could be available in the clinic. And of course, the study included humans. One of the authors is Dr. Kirkland from the Mayo Clinic that we have spoken to before on senescent cells. Alpha clotho is a protein which has been shown to be protective against aging and declines in the protein have been associated with age-related phenotypes. Boosting clotho may have therapeutic value. However, there is no clinically available way to increase it at the moment. In this study, they looked at human senescent cells in vitro, aged mice in vivo, and looked at the clotho presence in urine from a clinical trial of desantinib and quercetin for patients with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. They found that exposure to elements of SASP reduces clotho in non-senescent cells, and transplanting senescent cells into mice also reduce clotho. In turn, in the model of obese older mice who would have a higher burden of senescent cells, deleting senescent cells increased clotho expression. And finally, from a clinical trial that was run using desatinib and questin, the clotho in the urine was increased. Just a quick note that clotho is one of the genes that BioViva is looking at to increase health span. In particular, last year, it was involved in a trial medical procedure carried out in Mexico to see if gene therapy would help. Five patients with mild to moderate dementia had gene therapy for clotho and HTERT, HTERT being the protein which extends telomeres. We covered this in our 33rd newsletter, so I won't go into more detail here, but just to say that the overexpression of clotho and HTERT did improve cognitive ability according to their tests. Clotho is expressed primarily in the kidney and the brain. Hence, measuring the levels in urine is a way of determining the levels of clotho in the body. The first part of the experiment was to show that a larger senescent cell burden led to a reduction in clotho expression. They did this in two experiments. The first of these was to show that factors from SASP reduce clotho expression in cells in vitro, which it did. And the second was to test in vivo. Senescent cells were transplanted into a young mouse, and the levels of urinary and brain clotho checked against a control, where the result was indeed lower clotho. This is also shown on the stained photo, where the tissue from the mouse with the senescent cells shows less activation of clotho. The next test was to confirm that removing senescent cells increased expression of clotho. 
This was done in vivo in transgenic mice with a mutation that would allow the removal of senescent cells when treated with AP20187. Looking at old and young mice, we can see that those treated with AP, which have lower senescent cell burdens, had higher levels of clotho. Since using this kind of gene modification will not work in humans, the next question is, if we use a senolytic compound such as quercetin or fisetin to reduce the senescent burden, will we see the same effect? Here are the results from the in vivo mouse study using either a combination of dasatinib and quercetin or fisetin. The paper does not cover the dosage, but it was oral and given once every 20 days for three consecutive days, so in a hit and run fashion to reduce the senescent cells. Whether the senescence came from age, diet induced obesity, or transplanted senescent cells, the senolytic helped to raise the level of clotho in the kidney. Perhaps more important is the level of clotho in the brain, where it has been associated with improved cognitive ability. Here we can see the difference between the stained tissue of old mice with vehicle and dasatinib and quercetin or fisetin. And finally, does this also work in humans? These results came from this study, which was reported in 2019. Its primary purpose was to study senolytics in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, but it seems they also gathered data to see changes in clotho, which they then went back to and looked at for this paper. The dose was 100 milligrams of dasatinib and 1,250 milligrams of quercetin over three consecutive days, once a week for three weeks. They saw that clotho expression in the urine did increase, and the levels of clotho was inversely related to a number of factors which are found in SASP, showing that in humans reducing SASP by eliminating senescent cells increased alpha clotho. As a way of increasing clotho expression, Oral senolytics do have the advantage that they can be administered in an intermittent way, as after elimination of the senescent cells, they take weeks to over a month to redevelop. In summary, the study shows that increased senescent cell burden decreases clotho, and reducing this burden through senolytics led to increased clotho expression. Clotho declines with age, and its expression has been associated with increased cognitive ability. It's great to see that senolytics like questin and fisetin, which work when taken orally, can increase this expression.